power. Power to turn the wheels of industry. Power to drive the mighty locomotive. Power to send great ships across the sea. Power from water. Power from oil. Power from coal. The modern way of using the power of the steam engine, diesel engine, or water wheel in the home, water into a power which can be sent over the land to the place where it is needed. There to be used to phone a friend, to light a lamp, or even heat a room. Although the modern generator is more complicated than the first one made by Michael Faraday more than a hundred years ago, the principles used are the same. This diagram explains how an electric generator works. On each side we have two magnetic poles to give us a magnetic field. And in the center a coil of wire mounted on an axle so that it can spin round and round in the magnetic field. If we spin the coil, you see that in one position the field passes through the coil, in another there is no field through the coil. So the field through the coil changes continually in amount. It is this change in the field that induces an electric current. As the coil rotates, the electric current changes its direction at every half turn. First this way, then that. We can measure the electric pressure developed in volts. As you would probably expect, if we increase the speed of rotation of the coil, the voltage increases. Twice the rate, twice the voltage, and so on. If we turn the model generator slowly, there is not sufficient voltage generated to light the lamp. If, however, we speed it up by pulling on it with a piece of string, the lamp lights. Notice the lamp will become dimmer as the speed drops. This also shows that the voltage depends on the speed of the generator. So, if we need high voltage, we can get it by making the coil rotate at great speed. Another way of getting higher voltage is to use more powerful magnets, and thus a stronger magnetic field. Using a stronger field, we get a greater change of field through our spinning coil, and thus a bigger voltage. Our model generator is quite capable of lighting one lamp, but if we use two lamps, we must also use more powerful magnets. This enables us to get more voltage at the same speed and light them both. You can see here how the magnetic field from the stronger magnet is much more intense and increases the voltage. The third way of increasing the voltage is to use a greater length of wire in the coil, or armature as we call it. This generator has a greater length of wire coiled on its armature, and we can now get a voltage that will light three lamps. Here you see the three stages. Speed applies to all three. Greater speed, greater voltage. Stronger magnets, greater voltage. Longer coil, greater voltage. So modern generators, which give us very high voltages, have large and powerful magnets, a great length of wire around the armature, and rotate at high speeds. But what is this for? 
You've probably noticed an arrangement like this on even the simplest generators. To help us understand what it does, we'll return to our model generator. Unless the whole circuit turns with the coil at the same speed, the wires from the coil will get twisted up. Since, obviously, you can't keep turning the circuit round and round, some means of collecting the current from the spinning armature is required. This is done simply by using two rings called slip rings, which are fastened to the armature and revolve with it. Two brushes are arranged to make contact with the rings as they revolve. Here it is being done on an actual machine. The brushes in this case are made of carbon rod and have little springs which will press them forward against the slip rings to ensure good electrical connection. With this arrangement, the current in the external circuit, that is through the meter, flows first in one direction, then the other. First this way, then there. This is called an alternating current and usually in modern alternating current circuits there are 50 changes of direction every second. For most purposes this doesn't matter and most of our electric appliances are made to work on alternating current. But sometimes we must have a direct current which flows in only one direction, charging batteries, for instance. In that case, we use another method of collecting the current from the armature. It is called the split ring commutator and consists of only one ring this time, but cut into two halves like this, each half being connected to one end of the coil. If we now turn the coil slowly, you can see that, although the flow of current in the coil still changes its direction, the split ring ensures that the current flows constantly in one direction in the circuit. In practice, in order to get a greater current and a smoother flow, we use not only one coil and two segments, but many coils on the armature and a correspondingly large number of segments in the ring. This, in conjunction with very powerful magnets, gives us the layout of the large modern direct current generator. You have seen how it is possible for the energy from coal, water, or oil to be carried by wires over the land to the home or city. In our modern world, where it is possible to obtain all the power we require, the electric generator has become the heart of our industrial systems.